Okay, we're looking at um, how to make a uh, your own index number and your own index graph like the movie, like the All Ordinaries Index. So if you remember back uh, when you did it um, on paper, you had something like this where you had the share price, um, and then you had the number of shares you hold and the price of them times them together, you get the value, and you do that all the way down, add it up, and you get your AMV which was your ag aggregate market value. And then you do the same for another week and the same for a third week. So this might be week one, this might be week two, this might be week three. And then you use them to work out your um, your base number or you got a base number and then you worked out your index number and you went from there. So if you remember back, you'd grab your, your value from the second week, divide it by the first week and times it by your base number. So it's always AMV2 divided by AMV1 times by the base. So in this one, if, if our base number is 500, which we made up, we do 1900 divided by 1400 times by 500 and we get a new number. Now make it, make it that was 560, which it's not, okay. Then the next week you'd grab the AMV, the next one over, divided by 1900. Notice how we've just moved down one and then we times it by our base number from there and we get a new one which went with 572 and then when you graph that you can see what's going on and that takes into account all the shares there. Now if you do this on a spreadsheet you can't go down this way it just doesn't work you've got to go horizontally okay um, it gets a bit upset so um, well you can come down but it's easier doing it horizontally so let's have a look at one I've pre made previously so we have here um, my company, so I've got ABC, and I've got a number of shares of value and AEO, so I've only got two companies in it. So if we have a look at this one here, let's grab um, this column in here. Okay, that's the name of my company, which is pretty cool. And then I've got, um, whoops, I'll just change the colour a bit. Then I've got the number of them, and notice it's the same all the way down. And then I've got the value of them. Now this value is worked out by going b2 times c2 so it's whatever is in b2 times by c2 and I copy that all the way down because that'll show me the value going up or down each week okay so that this one here is all my one company so that's like in that that previous slide of them going across the page okay my next one is AEO same deal I've got the price then I've got the number of shares and I've got the value the values worked out by having e2 times f2 which is just these two columns times by each other my AMV this is my aggregate market value, is the value here. I'll just change my little color a little bit. I'll go bright gray. So that is that 720, add this 6,800 there, and that gives me that one there. So if you have a look, it's D2, add G2. So, and that's copied all the way down. So it's nothing, no rocket science in that. That's pretty cool. And if you've got four companies, you'd have four across there. If you've got three companies, you'd have three across there. Okay, now here comes my index. Forget this first number here because this is a base number. Remember we talked about that base of being 500? I've put the base number at 3,124 and I'll explain it why in a tick. But come down here because this is where our formula is. If I go to there, my formula is H3 divided by H2 times by I2. So it's H3 AMV2 divided by my AMV from the week before. So it's like AMV2 divided by AMV1 times by my base number. Okay, and I get 3194. And then I come down here and I go, if I go there, it's going to be that number there, 7850, which is H4 divided by H3 times by I3. And it just keeps on rotating through. Now, if I change this base number up here, then what that means is, let's just say change it to say 500. Now notice what it does, is I'll just grab my little keyboard and drag it out there, it changes my base number down like that. Now if I was going to graph that against the All Ordinaries Index, it would be really hard because as you can see, the All Ordinaries Index is 3,121 and my index starts at 500. And that's a bit silly. If it starts at 500, I'm going to have this big gap in my graph, I'm not going to be able to see what goes on. So what I might do, is I might just change that back to the, I've just kept it as 3,124, which is the same as the All Ordinaries Index, so then I should be able to be able to see whether my share price mirrors it or not. I also grabbed the Dow Jones Index from America, but you don't have to do that. The All Ordinaries Index, you just go to the Yahoo site and just type in All Ordinaries under the code that you're looking for, and it will come up, I think it's XAO, um, and then you can grab that price and you can match it against your share price, so it's pretty cool. When you draw a graph, it looks something like this. Now this is a little bit big, so if I shrink it down a bit and get rid of my keyboard, you'll be able to see what it looks like. And notice that I've got a purple line and a, a beautiful um, kind of greeny line and, the, and a blue line. Purple line is the All Ordinaries Index. I'll just scroll across a bit more. I actually want to make it a bit smaller. There we go. Um, and then you've got the 
my index is the greeny one, all ordinaries is the purple, and the Dow Jones is the other one. So you can see that um, if I'm following my index, it kind of goes up and down, but it doesn't quite mirror the all ordinaries index, which is the purple one. You can see that it's kind of jumping all over the place a bit. So then you can talk a little bit about because I've only got a few shares here, it doesn't mirror the All Ordinaries Index, so it's not going to be very good to actually make a prediction. But if your index does mirror it, so when the All Ordinaries drops down, like when the, when the purple line drops down, and then if yours drops down at the same time and kind of mirrors it, you can say, well, to make predictions, I can use the, my index, um, which mirrors the All Ordinaries Index, or I can just use the All Ordinaries Index because it shows what happens in my, my companies that I own. So it's actually mirroring what's going on and giving you an indication of when to buy and sell and trade. So you can use that in a project um, or for calculations. And so the formulas, uh, you can go back and have a look at it again. Don't know if you want to have the Dow Jones in there, but the All Order is, is definitely a good one to have in there. Excellent.